Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be sharing all the seeds and the transplants that you can put in your garden right now in the month of September. September is one of the biggest months for gardening and preparing for fall. There's so many different varieties of seeds that you can plant right now that will produce all through the year. Um, right now we are pulling up all of our plants, which I do plan to put a video together. We're kind of in the middle and I'll show you what the garden looks like right now. Um, we are amending our soil and getting our beds ready to go ahead and direct sow and put some transplants in. We have a ton of seed trays that we have plants in and we just started back our workshops. So the workshops will um, start up next weekend and we have another one to follow the weekend after that. So if you guys are interested in coming out and visiting our farm and doing any of the workshops, I now have a live website where you can actually register for those workshops and you can buy all of our products, including this hat I'm wearing, with an easy checkout. I'm super excited, so make sure you guys go check that out. That will be uh, in the description below. At the end of this video, I'll be taking you inside and showing you all the different seed packets that I plan on putting into my fall garden. I'll go over all the varieties and the different brands. So stick around for that. And if you're wondering where you can get one of these beautiful green stalk gardens, they are actually on sale right now for Labor Day. They're $99 with my promo code SD10. You just use that promo code at checkout. You can get this beautiful five tier green stalk garden for only $99. Now you can also use that promo code throughout the year and you'll go ahead and get $10 off your purchase, but I can put 30 different plants in here. I also did a video on how I set this up and why I like this product. I'll also give you a quick little garden tour of all the different vegetables, flowers, and herbs that I have in here. I also have some succulents in here. It's really fun, um, but we'll go over that as well. So we're gonna jump right into what we can plant right now in September. Right now in 9A, we can plant, and I'll have all this in the description below, we can plant arugula, beans, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, Chinese cabbage, collards, kale, kohlrabi, lettuce, mustards, bunching onions, radishes, spinach, squash and zucchini, Swiss chard, turnips, and we can actually start strawberries right now. I actually want to get another tower and put all strawberries in it. If you've been following me for a while, I do have a tower that somebody gifted me. I'm not even sure where I got it from, but it is starting to fall apart. And this one has a nice five-year warranty on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get another one and put strawberries in uh, to replace the other one. So We'll be showing you that here in a couple months. Now for zone at 9B, this is the longest list. If you are now just joining us, I've been putting a what to plant month by month for our gardening zone. So you can actually go back and watch any month that you want to watch and find out what I'm putting into my garden, see what's actually doing well and what you can plant at that time of the year. Now my resources that I'm using, I'm using two different resources, which I'll put the links in the description so you can compare. And there's sometimes I will plant things early or plant things late just to, just to test it in the garden and see if it does well. So that's another reason that it's fun to follow along with the different experiments that I'm doing right here in my garden for this zone. So for zone 9B, we can plant arugula, beans, beets, broccoli, brussels, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, Chinese cabbage, collards, cucumbers, eggplants, kale, lettuce, mustards, bunching onions, peppers, radishes, spinach, Swiss chard, turnips, sugar, <laughs> I did this really late at night, I can barely read my handwriting, <laughs> sugar peas, uh, strawberry, pineapple, oh, sugar cane, that's what I wrote, <laughs> and tomatoes. So all of those you can plant right now. I'm gonna take you over to my little seedling area and show you what I planted in um, last month in August and show you how they're doing. Here are some of my seedlings that I started in August. 
I have some sweet banana peppers, which are my all-time favorite peppers. I have um, some sweet peppers, and um, I also have some money maker tomatoes, which I'm really excited about. I had a nice gentleman offer a trade for some pumpkin seeds, and these are supposed to be really great for Florida. They're almost like a um, a cherry tomato, but a little bit bigger. I don't really like growing big tomatoes in our zone. It's with our temperatures and heat and rain and the cold, at least I know my cherry tomatoes are gonna mature quicker than a large tomato. So that's why I like growing more of a cherry tomato, especially in the, in the summer. Now, since then I have already planted some of my sunflowers. I started some sunflowers as well. I went ahead and planted carrots. And as you can see, I have removed almost everything out of the garden. Um, I will be putting a video together to show you all of my children and I pulling everything up. We've started a little sunflower patch here. I'm gonna do another one over here. We still do have our Everglades tomatoes that are producing um, and our area over here, which I still have a lot of weed pulling to do. Um, and a couple more soil amendments to get together before I can show you that. So here's the array of different seeds that I will be putting in my garden this fall. I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly what I'll be putting into the garden. I am putting lettuce, all different kinds of varieties. We've got this salad bowl by Ferrymore. I've got romaine, which I plant every year, butter crunch, we plant every year as well. And that's from Baker Creek Seed Company. Then we also have a red romaine. I have not ever planted this black seeded Simpson, so I'm excited about that. We also like to do a little bit of bib lettuce. Now I'm also gonna try spinach again. I've never really been successful with spinach. I'm not sure if it's the variety, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this Corienta hybrid. And we're also gonna try this igloo lettuce. So I also sell broccoli seeds and a lot of different varieties of seeds. You can go to my website and see um, what type of different varieties of seeds that I save right here in my garden and harvest. So I actually added uh, all of my seeds together in a seed collection. You can actually purchase um, at a discounted rate but you can check that out on our website. So we're gonna do the broccoli and another spinach variety here. I'm also gonna do some cabbage. I wanna do two different cabbages this year. Um, they're both an early uh, type of cabbage. So hopefully that will be a quicker harvest. Um, I'm also going to do this really fun bush scallop. I did this um, I think it was last spring. Yep, did it last spring, and they were so beautiful, but the hornworms got a hold of it, army worms, and with the rain that we had coming, it, they just didn't last. So I'm gonna give that another shot. Also with zucchini and squash. I'm not gonna plant a whole lot of squash this year. I just never really have a good turnout. So if anybody has any really awesome tips for me on growing squash, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I seem to be successful with everything but that. <laughs> I'm also gonna plant some cilantro. We love eating Mexican meals, so we can never buy enough cilantro or grow enough. Um, kale was my number one winner of the entire fall garden last year, along with our collard greens. The kale and our blue dazzling kale that we planted fed us literally all year round. I just pulled up my kale plants last week. They were still producing. Um, we did leave, I think it was a couple plants of collards in to see if they'll actually continue to produce. Um, but this is huge. So if you're wanting to feed your family throughout the year, kale and collards is a must for sure. I also want to try this um, dwarf variety. Um, I have not grown a curly kale yet, so I'm excited about that. We're also gonna give cauliflower a try. I'm gonna do some more Swiss chard. Um, our children love sugar snap peas and um, sugar daddy peas. We're also gonna do some zinnias and some mammoth sunflowers. You can get those on my website. 
Now, I do have some asparagus already growing in my back barn um, garden, but they've just been so hard to keep up with. And I know they take forever to actually produce, but I'm gonna try these. Um, my mother-in-law bought a ton of seeds for me this year and thought, well, what the heck, we'll go ahead and find a bed and keep those in it and see if we can be successful with those. Um, Brussels sprouts have really never been successful with, but we're gonna try them again. And here's the two different varieties of collard greens I'm gonna do this year. We're gonna do the Georgia, Georgia Southern and Vetas. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, but I always like to get some instant gratification into the garden and purchase some plants at my local nursery. Um, we enjoyed doing uh, the fresh breakfast last year, so we're gonna do that again. Um, they're kind of a more mild radish, so the kids could actually could eat those. Um, I also want to try these just because they're, they look cool. We're going to try some of those. Um, today I actually planted some of the carrots that we grew last year. Um, went ahead and direct sowed those into the garden. So we're going to try two different varieties here. Um, I also am going to grow some more basil. We are going to try celery from seed this year. I have never grown celery from seed. I typically uh, save celery pieces, uh, the inside heart of the celery and plant them that way. Um, I juice a lot of celery uh, throughout the week. So that's typically what I would put into the garden um, or purchase from the store. So I'm going to give that a try. Um, beets, we're going to try beets again. <laughs> I think I only had like three successful beets that grew last year. Um, I'm going to try them in a completely different area um, where I feel like the soil is a lot better and see if we can get these to come up. Kohlrabi is always fun to grow. They just are really neat um, looking plants and it's a nice little app. We eat them raw as an appetizer um, before dinner as we're getting ready. We, we pulled these tops off and we just slice it and put a little uh, pink salt on them. We also have cooked down the tops um, and like almost like a, a mixture of kale with those and they actually taste just like the kohlrabi. I'm not a huge mustard fan, but I want to have just a few in there just to kind of see how they grow and maybe mix them in with our collards. This is a new variety of sunflowers. I've actually already put these in the garden and started these um, that were really fun uh, that I planted uh, last season. So we're going to do more of those. Um, I am also going to do some little mini bell tomatoes. Here are some beans I saved um, from last season. These are rattlesnake beans. They're just real fun and beautiful and the kids enjoy eating them. This year I'm going to do a lot more of asparagus beans. Some people call them yard beans or long beans. Um, I have been saving them as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna plant those this year and I'm gonna stagger them. So every two to three weeks we'll have a continuous bean harvest. Um, also we'll do some bush beans. Um, I have not bought my bok choy. I'm surprised how many stores are <laughs> do not even have their seeds yet. So I'm gonna have to order some bok choy or check down at my local feed store and bulb onions have yet to come in. So they typically come in next month at my local um, garden center. So that is everything that we are putting in our garden for this fall. Um, throughout the coming upcoming months, we'll be playing different things and staging these. So make sure you continue to watch our videos, see how all these things are growing. Um, I also have got some different flowers that I want to try. Um, when we visited Alaska, we saw a lot of these up there and we want to go ahead and maybe see if we can't uh, plant them here. And we also did some of our Everglades tomatoes. Um, oh, and some Jerusalem gold hybrids. So those are gonna be a new sunflower in the garden as well. So now I'm gonna give you a tour of my green stalk garden, vertical garden. And this is absolutely beautiful. It's got a five year warranty on it. And I did do a full video. I'll put the link to the video in the description below of how I set this up and why I love this. But I have 30 different plants in this in literally like two square feet. 
and it does not take up much space at all. So what I have down here, I have a, a squash and a zucchini with some marigolds. I have a cherry tomato, some basil, and another cherry tomato. We have some mint, which I actually propagated from my mint that I already have in the garden. It's really beautiful. It's got this long piece hanging down here. We have some cilantro. I have some thyme. And I have no clue what this is called, but it's just a beautiful succulent that I continue to propagate and use throughout the year. I have some pintas up here and some succulents that I have propagated over time. I didn't even plan on putting these in here. Um, as I was setting this up, it was kind of a impromptu decision. I was going to put bush beans in here, but I just wanted it complete. <laughs> So I just pulled some succulents off of this area here and put them in there. I've got some more thyme. I have some peppers right here. I have some Mexican oregano. I actually just snipped off a piece from my herb garden over there. I have another little succulent down here. And then I have all kinds of different succulents behind here that I just plugged in. Um, they don't need sun so I figured they would be just fine back here um, and it kind of add to the tower so here's my little sketch pad that I do every season I do one for spring and one for fall um, since we have been basically setting up our garden as a survival garden since the pandemic we have been trying to make sure that we have something producing at least three to four crops that are producing each month for us to eat. So we've actually been able to do that this past year. So if you wanna go back and watch what to plant and when series, that will be for 2020. Um, and I'm going to continue this um, throughout the year. But this is actually what we'll be starting with fresh this fall. I have this laid out in my rows and I have my beds and my four beds and different towers and whatnot here. Um, you don't have to be fancy with putting together um, your plan. I never ever stick to my exact plan, but I do get an idea of what I want to plant when I'm doing my wish list. Um, what we do is we get the family together, we go through different seed packets and varieties and talk about what each child loves to eat and what we want to plant this year. So I know um, there is something for everybody in our garden. And thankfully our kids eat a lot of our vegetables just straight raw from the garden. Um, and it's so important right now with viruses and sicknesses going around that eating fresh from our garden is giving us lots of nutrients and antioxidants um, right into our system. So we absolutely love it. Um, this is kind of why I have grown our own food the past seven years as I've done a lot of research when I started having children and realized how much cancer causing chemicals go into our vegetables and fruits and get sprayed on them. Oh, lovely. We've got a chicken in the garden. Get, 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 go, go, go. <laughs> Anyways, when I started realizing the first foods that my child is going to eat are vegetables and fruits. I went the organic route and over time realized, wow, organic is super, super expensive to buy. So we started growing our own vegetables and pureeing our vegetables for our babies. Um, now they eat fresh from the garden and it's just a journey that our family has enjoyed and loved to do. <clears throat> but you don't have to be fancy with your sketching. Just get a plan together. Um, because when you do get in the garden, you start laying out and putting your plants and you realize, oh, I actually don't need this much space. And then you start switching things around. Um, the reason I do this also is for crop rotation. I like to go back two years prior and make sure that I am not putting my collards or any particular, any crop in the same place I did the year prior. I want to rotate them. And the reason for that is, we want to not have different bugs and pests coming back and knowing that where those um, plants and crops are. 
There's also some plants that will pull nutrients out of the ground and you don't want to continue to plant a certain crop in the same era time after time. So it's a good thing to keep notes, make sure you're crop rotating. And um, we've been doing this all the way from 2017 um, when we only had just this small garden area, which is this area right outside our laundry room. <clears throat> and then our garden grew from there. So that is what I... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed and comment below if you have any questions. I always read my comments. Make sure you share this video with other gardeners that may be in our zone or needing some tips. Um, all those things help my channel with the algorithms. So make sure you do that. You can also go check out my new website that I'm excited about or sign up for one of my workshops that we have coming up this weekend and the weekend after. Make sure to check back and subscribe to our newsletter so then that way you know what different events that we have going on and workshops and new products that I'm adding to the website. Um, so that's all I have for you guys.